you needed some coins to build that dream team you guys have always wanted, head on over to my sponsor, Buy Madden Coins. They have the cheapest, the quickest, and the most reliable coins on the market right now. Make sure to use code Poodle for 20% off at checkout. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video guys today. We're going over who are the best players to use for the 91 to 92 overall power pass. Now, today at 1030, they're going to be doing a special stream regarding the next series. And as we know, every series and level grind typically comes with a power up pass. So in our past series, series one, we got the 87 to 88. In series two, we got the 89 to 90. So um, we're all assuming in series three, we will be getting a 91 to 92 power up pass. So with that being said, I'm going to be going over the top five players with a few honorable mentions, a few little discussion of the players I think. Now, these are in order. Obviously, most people's top fives will seem eerily similar because when you look at how the game has progressed to this point, there's really only a few options that are just surefire. Like, there's a few guys that you just have to take. I'm going to go over them. Uh, I believe three of them are interchangeable. Two are on the outside looking in, but pretty much the top three are interchangeable. You can go with any of them. I'll give you my in-depth analysis on all three of them. The final two are going to be more the outsider guys that I still think you want, depending on your team, right? Like, if that's what you need, go for it. But I think that these top three guys are surefire. You can't miss with them. These are the guys you pretty much want, right? These are the beasts. These are the monsters. Even I'm stuck between who to get. What I'm going to do is I'm going to base them off who's the most expensive. So remember that. This is a good theory, by the way. You watch this now. These are the players you want now. To decide which ones to get, let's say you have a ton of coins, right? And it's not really about... So, like, some teams, let's say you're a budget team, 85 overall, you can literally only, like, you can never afford these cards. So, you need to take pick one that you can have for the rest of the year. That's when you base on these rankings, right? But, if you have a ton of coins, you can always alternate the rankings. So, okay, so this guy's cheaper than that guy. So, I'm going to use it on the more expensive guy. I'll buy the cheaper guy. That's for people with a lot of coins. If you don't have coins, just listen to the rankings, understand, and pick your guy. But... Before we get into this video, boys, make sure you're down below. Give this video a big thumbs up. You guys have been smashing the like button. Make sure to get this video to over 100 likes. All you got to do, all you, all you loyal fans and supporters, just hit the like button. goes a long way in helping the channel out. Also, comment down below who you think should be in the top five. If you think I missed someone, comment down below and comment why. And if you haven't already given this video, hit, hit the sub button is what I meant to say. By the way, anyone notice that this is yellow? I, I just realized, like, I was looking at the camera and it is yellow. Um, I don't know how that happened. That's a mistake. It's going back to pink tomorrow. But, anyways... Make sure to give a big subscribe to the channel boys. Come join the family. Thank you guys for all the support as of late Now let's get into this video now First things first coming at number five, right? This is one of the guys that are on the outside looking at. I think he's still awesome But I don't think he's a top five choice. There's multiple reasons for that, but I'll get to that in a second Now most of these guys are gonna be 92 to 93 is just because The limited then you, you want to use limited time cards, right? Because limited time cards are untouchable. They're hard to come by those are the cards you want to use them on see Real quick, honorable mention, a guy you could use on is like Aaron Rodgers, right? Awesome card, pretty expensive, but he's not the most expensive. His power-up train is going to suck because you have to get his kickoff card for another 600k. So that's why guys like that aren't in here. These guys will be easy to get to. You'll understand what I'm saying as I get to. So, coming in at number five, Jadavion Clowney. Now, this guy isn't more high. He's not higher because of multiple reads. First off, because I think he's slightly better than Lawrence Taylor, and Lawrence Taylor is going to get the next upgrade. And Lawrence Taylor is going to be more of a year-long card. See, they have the same speed, same excel. Lawrence Taylor has better strength, better tackle, less play rec, similar block shed, same power move, and way better finesse move. So, Lawrence Taylor is already almost better as it is. And he's not even limited time, and you can have him all year, and he's going to get another upgrade real soon. So, that is why Clowney's at five. He's really expensive. He's a great card, but you can, you're better off getting Lawrence Taylor, in my opinion. But he's still there. He's got to be there. Coming in at number four. One of my favorite cards this year, George Kittle. Now, George Kittle is a pretty big improvement on his 90 right here. Not a month. I did upgrade him more, so it's not crazy, but he has plus two speed, plus two strength, plus catch, plus two catch in traffic, plus two spec catch, plus two short route running, plus two medium route running, and plus one uh, run blocking. Although th these cards don't hit different thresholds. That is why he's not higher. This is the best time in the game, but if you compare them, they all have the same 90 thresholds and the same 80 thresholds. So their stats don't change too much, which is why... I've been telling you guys, don't sleep on the 90 George Kittle. But, yes, George Kittle's a beast. He's going to be crazy expensive. And I want Kittle year-long. That is why he's on this list. If it wasn't for being year-long, I wouldn't have him there. But, year-long George Kittle is going to end year-end going to be the fastest end in the game. And if you guys know, having a tight end with even just average to above average speed is going to be game-breaking for you, right? Because, like, average speed right now is about 85, 86. That's, like, average. But, at tight end, you're playing against slower linebackers, outside linebackers. You're playing against no one. So, tight ends with even decent speed are game-breaking. Trust me, George Kittle's going to be a monster. But, I'll wait for his redux more than likely. Because these top three guys, I think, are can't miss. Obviously, if you have a 49ers theme team, there you go. Like, some people can go that route. But, I think 
there's these top three that you cannot miss. These are the monsters. These are the guys that you have to go. I think you have to go one of these three. These are like more honorable mentions. Some guys that I think are still there, but it has to be team specific for you to overtake these other guys. Next on the list. Now, this is an order, although I don't think this is the order I'll take them in. I think this is just, this is the smartest order. Like in my opinion, this is the smartest order. Although I don't think I can, I like, I have, I have a, I have a man crush on Deion Sanders. So that's going to be hard to do, but like you just, I just gave away coming at number three is going to be prime time Deion Sanders. Now, Deion Sanders is 92 overall and number three, he's 92 speed, 92 excel, 92 agility, 89 jumping, 89 play rec, 92 man, 90 zone, 77 press. So this card, these top three cards are going to be year long cards. These are end game cards. You pick them up, you upgrade them for the rest of the year. That is why they're both in the, they're all three of them in the top three, but out of the three, I think Deion Sanders might end up going for the least. He's going to be at least close. I don't think he'll be the most out of the three. And also because there's guys like Denzel Ward in the game who are pretty comparable. Obviously, I can't compare Ward right now because Ward's a, a rooted a monster right now. So, but Dion does not have press, which in a game with a ton of man, a ton of blitzing, press is kind of important. Although, you don't have to really man him up. When you man him up, you don't have to press him. But still, it does limit what you can do at times. I think Dion's a monster. I think he gets crazy animations that no one else in this game gets. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that, that uh, 78 catching shows you wouldn't think it right you think that something catching looks bad i know i think thresholds for catching are super important this year at cornerback or at secondary or on defense in general guys with 60 catching get the regular picks that they can get guys with 70 or above catching i'm telling you Deion sanders gets like super bowl malcolm butler picks he like elbows them and gets the pick right between two like he makes some crazy picks and i'm pretty sure it comes with that catching stat but besides the point Dion's also a quarterback, so he is a depth position, which is important, which is why he's up there in the top three. Now, usually I give a depth position a higher spot on the team, but the guy I'm going to put at number one is a guy that's, with the way this game plays, I think more important. But being a cornerback, he is important, but this game is run heavy. The cornerbacks aren't used as much as you'd actually think, which is why he's also not there. If it was any other Madden, I think Primetime would be number one. But remember, he does more than just that. He kick returns. He plays on the special teams. He does a lot of crazy stuff. I love Dion. He might be, he's, in my heart, he's my number one. I think he's going to be my number one pick. But I'm gonna go in order of stats, and I feel like what could help you the most, and what's gonna be the most expensive again. So coming up next on the list, Randy Moss. Randy Moss, Mutt 10, 92 overall wide receiver. 91 speed, 92 jumping, 90 catching. He combines a Tyree Kill-like athleticism with Randy Moss catching. Now, obviously I think this card needs to be powered up. Powered up, this card's going to hit a lot of crazy thresholds, right? Powered up, he's gonna probably, with, with go deep in camp, he's gonna have above 90 catch in traffic, like a 95 deep route running, Almost a 90 medium route running and a pretty high short route running with better speed, better jumping. He put some sprint on this guy. This guy's gonna be a monster. But you have to you have to build him properly. I'm really upset I did not get my Fremont 10 player because I could have had Randy Moss and I could have had Dion anyways or or the next guy that I'm gonna say, which I'm not. I'm gonna give it away. But in my opinion, this is the number two. Randy Moss has some other stats that are pretty important as you go down. If you go on down too, he's got. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Decent kick returning, honestly. He actually scored a kick return touchdown on me the other day, and I was freaking out. He's got 92 jumping, obviously. He's got 85 ball carry vision. 81 juking i thought he had a little better off the ball stats i guess not he's more of a straight line runner but enough said about randy moss he's a beast you guys already know that uh me personally if i would take Dion over randy i think i'd rather have Dion. but the issue is that randy's a beast offensively and they we don't, it's not a pass heavy game which is again why i put these guys lower and i'm just a bigger fan of Dion. but i think i think randy might actually end up going for more than Dion. i don't know when it comes to Redux, we really don't know how these prices are going to go. It all depends. These prices have been fluctuating. Now, coming at number one on the list is Aaron Donald. Now, it's not just because his card art looks cool. I feel like with the way this game plays, Aaron Donald needs to have one of the top spots, if not the top spot. Like I said, these top three are interchangeable. It's not like, oh, you have to go down. I'm telling you, they are that good that I might even take Dion. That's how interchangeable they are to me. But you compare him to Aaron, you compare him to my Aaron Donald, right? This Aaron Donald's really, really good. But this new one has better athleticism by quite a bit. Better strength by quite a bit. Better attacking by a little bit better play rec. Slightly better block shedding. Slightly better finesse move. And slightly better uh, power move. Now, yes, these cards are similar. But this card here will have almost every threshold. Not to mention the fact that this is a game that if you can get pressure on the quarterback, you're golden all game. Now, he's going to be able to stop the run game on that right side with some abilities. Now, not to, to make it even better, I have him on the same side rushing as Taylor. So if Donald gets past him when Taylor draws a single, it's easy money. Or if, he, if Aaron can start drawing more doubles, then Lawrence Taylor gets right off the edge. It all depends on how they do this. So, in my opinion, Aaron Donald's up. I don't think he's the flashiest pick, right? If you're going flashy, you just want to have fun. Deion or Randy. But with the way my defense plays, I'm going to need this Donald at some point. So, for me, it doesn't matter. Like, I need Donald. I need Deion. I need Randy. I have all three of them powered up. I need I need all three of them. So, for me, it's interchangeable. I can take any of them. Pretty much the way I'm going to go about this for my personal team. 
I'm going to wait for their Redux to come out. Whoever is the most expensive is probably who I'll end up taking. For me, I think it's between Aaron Donald and Deion Sanders. I think that's who I'm, I'm kind of down to and who I want. I don't know if I'm going to go Randy. I should go Randy. My, have, you know, I haven't bought a wide receiver all year. I have not. Like, I literally have not had a wide receiver all year. All mine are freight or from pack openings. Like, I've actually not went through the auction block and got one, so I kind of need one. But, guys, I hope this helps you guys out with the power passes. Like I said, the honorable mention, like, you could go Troy Polamalu. The reason I don't have him on there is because we have Pat Tillman. We have Kittle. I think he's better than Gronk. I don't think Julius Peppers is all that great, although people killed me for saying that last time. George Joe Thomas is good. But who wants to use their power pass and left tackle? Guys, that's about it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. All the little supporters, give this video a thumbs up. Helps out the channel tremendously. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, boys. Come join the family. You guys won't regret it. Let's start grinding to 12K. We're getting there slowly, slowly but surely. And comment down below, like I said, who should I have also put in here that you guys think I left out? Who was the biggest snub from this list, guys? That's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out. See you guys next video. Peace.